I know I have a sunburn still. You're just gonna have to ignore it because I have something I have to say and I would really like to do it wearing this shirt. <laughs> Between the absolute train wreck that was Netflix's Insatiable, casting their token fat girl Shannon Purser in unreasonably unlikable roles every time, and dressing her like she's a grandmother, <laughs> and doing Flora absolutely dirty in the Winx Club, and completely desexualizing her and not knowing how to dress her and making her whole plot line about her weight. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised when I found out the casting for Nina Zenik and Shadow and Bone that's coming up at the end of the month. It's no surprise that I love Shadow and Bone. I talk about it extensively on social media. The Grishaverse brought me back into reading and I am so grateful for the author Leigh Bardugo for creating this universe. It's brought me into reading, writing, it's been a great escape for me. And I was so excited when I found out that the book series was going to have a show on Netflix at the end of April. April 23rd, which, you know, all Grishaverse fans have saved and Every calendar because we're all very excited of course but I was really surprised when I found out that the show was preaching this idea of diversity and inclusivity with their casting and yet they cast a straight size actress to play Nina Zenik. I don't want to discount the racial diversity that the show set out to do, which isn't my place to say if it succeeded or not. However, I do know there's been a lot of talk about colorism and specifically the character Jesper. However, when I'm speaking about diversity in this case, I'm specifically speaking about body diversity. Danielle Galligan is the actress playing Nina Zenik, and I don't want to harp on her too much because she's taking a role and I'm excited to see how she portrays Nina. I'm not gonna lie, I think she's a beautiful actress and she's been on shows like Game of Thrones in the past. And I don't want to talk about her credibility as an actress because this is on the casting directors and Netflix to have done this properly, not the actress. That being said, you know, if you are a straight size actress, I recommend not going after plus size parts, but maybe the part wasn't advertised as a plus size part. Honestly, I would have cast Shannon Purser. Give her a sexy role because she can do sexy. Let's just say that. I wanna talk a little bit about this, why it bothers me so much, why it's bothering the Grishaverse community so much, because we are all pretty heated and I wanna say this up front, I'm still gonna watch the show. I'm so excited to watch it. I hope you're excited to watch it, but I also wanna know that even if I love something, I can still critique it, and I hope that you do the same. You don't have to completely do one or the other. We can critique the things that we love, and I think that we should do that. So just wanted to point out here that even though I'm a plus size girl, I do still have a lot of thin privilege. So take all of this information, knowing that about me and my background, um, I operate with a lot of thin privilege in my life. So just wanted to make that known and that my connection to the character of Nina is going to be very different from my larger bodied friends. I also use the word fat and plus size interchangeably in the reclaimed way here. So if that bothers you, just proceed with caution. So let's just talk a little bit about Nina Zenik and her character. So Nina Zenik is a character that shows up first in the Grishaverse in the book Six of Crows, and then later in Crooked Kingdom, King of Scars, and Rule of Wolves. Nina is bold and she is forward. She expresses her sexuality. We love a big bi girl, honestly. She eats unapologetically. Her eating habits aren't used for comedic effect. They are strictly romanticized in a positive way which is essential for a lot of people, especially people like me who have struggled with eating disorders in the past, romanticizing food the way that Nina does is amazing. We, we don't see characters eat, and we especially don't see fat characters eat in a way that is seen as positive and not negative about their character. I love that Nina just enjoys food, and it's, it's very wholesome to me. I got my little waffle earrings here for Nina, specifically about them because of Nina. I love that Nina has a complex history and past. She's very powerful and she has flaws. She's a very complex character. She's got a lot of nuance and I really encourage if you haven't read, if you've gotten this far in the video and you haven't read any of the Grishaverse or Six of Crows where Nina's introduced, I highly recommend doing so. She was a really big inspiration to me and I really enjoyed reading her. I want to talk about Nina's appearance because I know that especially in fantasy books there's this big push to not describe characters appearances because if it's not relevant to the specific plot then a lot of people consider not including it at all. This goes for race, body size, etc. And I personally don't agree with this because I think representation in all media is really important especially in fantasy where oftentimes the entire cast is straight sized white and more often than not male I've found so it's really exciting to see a diversity that at least Leigh Bardugo is 
including and many other authors as well so we see that she's tall she's curvaceous and she's she's Nina there are many other renditions of Nina that I have personally found that I love books are subjective I can imagine her however I want and these are some of the images that I personally love all of the artists that have done these fan arts will be linked down below definitely recommend checking them out because they are fantastic this is on the fandom website which I uh, frequent often I yeah I frequent the fandom site often but this is under uh, Nina's appearance Nina has long curly brown hair and green eyes she's tall curvaceous and described as looking like a generously carved figurehead she wears a red and gold robe with a black waist tie and gold trim I also have some quotes from the book that describe Nina's appearance and I thought that I'd share them with you she was tall and built like the figurehead of a ship carved by a generous hand I like this one still nice and round every time Time she moved the reindeer cloak parted revealing a flash of round calf Inej moved to the nearest air duct and lifted the grate it would be a tight squeeze for Nina but they'd manage the plunging gown barely covered her substantial cleavage and clung tightly to her buttocks Nina's weight and size is brought up contextually in the story however it's not poked fun at she is not fitting into one of the four categories of fat characters I've talked about this briefly but I'm hoping to talk about it more in a future video where I talk about fat characters in Disney if you want to see that let me know because that will be a long one I can tell you I've kind of created these four categories that I often see fat characters in obviously there are outliers obviously there are overlaps the first is comedic relief the second is villains the third is desexualized and the fourth is their weight is their entire plot Hi, editing me here this is from the movie Dumplin which is on Netflix and I highly recommend that you watch it but I also don't know if this movie would be entirely about the main character, Dumplin's weight. Um, but if you've seen it and you have thoughts, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't seen Dumplin, I still really recommend that you watch it. So I'm pretty sure everyone can see where their favorite fat characters fit into one of those four categories. However, Nina is different. Nina is allowed to express her sexuality. She does have comedy, but she is not the sole purpose of comedic relief. She is not a villain. I mean, maybe she is, depending on who you're talking to. Maybe Jarl thinks she's a villain. I don't think she is. <laughs> and her entire story doesn't revolve around her weight. I'd actually say that her weight has nothing to do with her plot. And I think that this is really important for writing fat characters in general. We don't need to be told every time, every single time she gets on a horse that she is big. We don't need to be told every time she wears a dress that her boobs are busting out. We know that what she looks like. And I think it's frustrating with all of this evidence, with all of this contextual information from the books that Netflix cast a straight size actress. I know that Netflix is trying to include diversity, but in the last two Netflix shows that are coming to mind that have plus size characters, we have Penelope from Bridgerton, is a teenager just like Nina, but she's plus size and she is desexualized. No one is interested in her and she's often seen as the ugly duckling. In the other show, The Winx Club, which I have many problems with, one of them is not the fact that they replaced a thin character of Flora with plus size character named Tara. However, they completely stripped Flora's characteristics of being flirty and girly and gave Tara clothes like this which completely desexualized her. Most of her arc was about the fact that she is bullied for being different, and honestly, the costume designers really needed to up their game on this show in general. None of them know how to dress a plus size person, and that is infuriating to me. I There are so many better things they could have put her in. Also not to mention the whitewashing with Winx Club. There's obviously a lot of problems with that. They could have cast a plus size Latina character and I think that would have been fantastic. There's intersectionality here. They didn't have to choose one or the other, but that's a completely different topic. We're talking about Nina here. My point is I don't mind that they had a plus size actress play a thin character from the source material. And you might be saying, Charlie, isn't it the same thing if they have a thin actress play Nina Zenik? And here's why it's not the same. In the Winx Club, all of the other characters are thin. They put in a plus size character for diversity's sake, but they did include a plus size character. I'm not gonna give them points for that, but it's a fact that they did do that. All of the other characters are thin, and there's one plus size character. So they've added something. In Shadow and Bone, all of the other protagonists are thin. By replacing the one plus size character with a thin actress, it's different. If the rest of the cast was also plus size, or they cast a plus size character to play a 
traditionally thin character from the source material, I might feel differently. But do you see what I mean here? Fat and plus size characters have been left out of media for so long, and when they're included, they're used as villains, butts of jokes, they're desexualized, and their entire plot is based around their weight. I know I said I love Dumplin', but the entire movie is about the fact that she is a big girl. And I would love to have a piece of media where the main character is fat, and her storyline does not revolve around her being fat. And that's why I loved Nina so much, because there was so much going on with her as a character. And by casting a thin actress, it takes away that representation for all of us who loved Nina so much. I know many people truly love Nina as a character and I asked on my Instagram for everyone who does love Nina to include some of their favorite things that they love about her and so many people were saying how she didn't demonize food. Her body wasn't demonized. She wasn't villainized because of the way that she looked. She was able to explore her sexuality and herself without becoming a caricature of a fat person. Nina was able to exist wholly as a complex and nuanced character and she was also fat. That's why I'm so frustrated about this Netflix show. They had a great opportunity to cast a fat actress, and many roles for fat actresses don't have such amazing source material as Nina does. Like I said, I'm still going to watch and probably really enjoy the show regardless. I really hope the actress that plays Nina, Danielle, understands the role that she's stepping into and knows the importance that it carries for the viewers and readers alike and how much Nina means to us because I think that that's missing in this conversation of casting a thin actress in a plus size role, because obviously there are moral issues with that, but beyond it, it's taking away what I found relatable. It's taking away the representation I had from the original book. And I, like I said, I'm still so excited for the show and I'm still gonna watch it and maybe I'll critique it when it's done. I'm disappointed with the way that they've decided to do the casting and I would have really loved for there to have been an opportunity for a up and coming plus size actress to have played Nina. And honestly, like I said at the beginning, if they wanted to give their token plus size actress, Shannon Purser, this role, this would have been, like, look at how amazing Shannon Purser looks. We only ever see her dressed like a grandma, but she's hot. Shannon Purser is really hot and they give her these crappy roles. Anyway, <laughs> I hope that you understand where I'm coming from with this. I feel like I was a little ranty with it. I have had a lot of thoughts. I've been rehearsing this video in the shower, was thinking of scripting it, and then I felt like it would just come off better if I just talked. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see where I'm coming from. If you have any thoughts about Nina Zenik or any actresses that you wish they would have cast as Nina, please leave them down below because I'd love to check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!